recently I was reached out to by Kyle Eats and they wanted to know would I be interested in doing a review on one of their clamp meters. So I went to the website to check it out because I've already got a clamp meter and I've got a couple other multimeters and just wasn't sure if it's something I needed or not. But after looking on their website, I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. Plus I watched a few reviews on it and I'm like, absolutely got to have it. So they sent it and I'm going to do a review today, but there's one function that this particular clamp meter can do that none of my other meters can do. Actually, there's a couple of them. So I'm going to get into it right now. This is like a soft but hard. It's not plastic, but it's got a good feel to it. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. We'll get right into the meter itself. All right, comes with an instruction booklet. This here is a thermocouple. This will read temperature. And these are the probes. And let me tell you, I really like these probes. They're like silicon, very soft, very pliable. Unlike some of these here, these are more rigid. I really love the feel of these, of these probes here. So you might be wondering, why do I have so many multimeters? Got another clamp meter here. Why do I need this other one? Well, each one can do something the other ones can't do. And that's the biggest reason. One thing they all have in common is reading voltage, amperage, continuity, temperature, uh, capacitance, things like that. All of these can do that. But like this clamp meter here, it can read microamps, and a lot of meters cannot read microamps. And so, you know, this is a HVAC clamp meter. I do HVAC work, have since the 1970s, and uh, this does everything I would need on a job, except for one thing. It's missing one key function that the new one does have and that is inrush been able to read inrush current and a little later i'm going to focus on the inrush and why that's important especially in this field hvac now the rest of these uh like this one here it just came with my power probe and it was part of it and i said you know what if somebody wants to borrow a multimeter i'll let them borrow that one because i paid top dollar for these two right here this can read ac or dc amperage this clamp this one here can only do ac and i really like that because i do a lot of automotive work and have an ability to now just clamp a wire and see what kind of amps i'm i'm running that's fantastic and the other thing that it can do I just mentioned it is in rush current. All right, you got a different uh, amp ratings here. You got up to a thousand amps here, and this is from 60 to 600 amps. On the next one, you got voltage here. This is in volts VFD. That is variable frequency drive. There are certain motors that has a variable frequency drive that can adjust the frequency and the amount of electricity going into them. And that's what this function is for, is being able to read voltage on those type of devices. Or you can just go to auto ranging. All right, this is DC volts here. So you can see what I'm saying. You just run through the different functions, put it to where you want it. Now this one right here has Hertz and Duty Cycle, which all of these have that too. But what that allows me to do is to know what Hertz something is at and also Duty Cycle. Like if you got pulse width modulated devices on your automobile, you can see what kind of Duty Cycle they're running at. I'm just going through these briefly because I want to focus on this inrush more than anything. All right, now this function here checks ohms continuity, diode, and capacitance. And the way you would do this, to just go through your functions to tell you which one. Now see that NF right here? Right now I'm in capacitance. That NF stands for nanofarads. Now this will read in nanofarads or it'll read in microfarads. Let me hook some cables up to this real quick and I'll show you that. All right, now this is a 15 microfarad capacitor and uh, if you read anywhere between 6% plus or minus, it's good. 370 volts. All right, let's check this and see what we got. See if we're in range. It's a brand new capacitor, so it should be. All 
there we go 15.69 that's still within six percent it's a little on the high side but it's not too high so that capacitor is good and to be honest with you i'd rather have one a little on the high side because as these things go out they start getting less and less capacitance usually so that could uh, give this one more life for sure our little quick test there and there again you got degrees celsius and fahrenheit and that's where this comes into play this is your thermocouple all of these meters i got has that same kind of setup they look a little different the ones for the flukes are brown where this one is white but it's the same thing now this little number right up here where it says 74 fahrenheit it's actually picking up the temperature in here without actually having that probe in it but if you want to put this like in an AC vent in your car or wherever, it would read through this as well. And this is pretty accurate with this. And that is the temperature out here. Now, this is also a placeholder. Let me show you. If I go back to uh, volts, see how it's saying 024 centigrade? That just does that. That's just a placeholder for when you get to a function that actually is going to show you. Like Hertz. Right here on the end, that is uh, this setting right here. And if you get this close to any kind of power, it'll let you know. So that's pretty cool if you're just wanting to check a outlet in a house or whatever to see if it's live or whatnot. Now this LOZ voltage, this is a low impedance voltage. And what it mainly gets rid of is like phantom voltage that you'll see a lot of times. All these meters do that. That's no big deal because when you actually touch your power source, it's going to be accurate. But a lot of times, like if you got this on regular voltage... Uh, let's see, go to voltage, AC. You see, how, that's what they call phantom voltage here. It's jumping all over the place. But once you actually go to a power source, it'll read accurately. And that's uh, in millivolts right now. That's one reason it's so active. All right, so like I said, just basic functions of everything. But one thing I do want to do real quick is I've got a splitter right here. And that basically... All right, let me turn this off. That basically just splits these two wires because anytime you do an amp reading with a with a uh, clamp meter, you only want one wire. You can't clamp over both of them. So let me go ahead and put this on 600 amps. Clip this around here. Get it to where we can see it. Maybe we can see it there. Now I just want to turn this bandsaw on. As you can see, I locked that amperage in. That's where you lock it, right here. Hit it again, that clears it. Now, if you hit this and hold it, now there's a light on here, as you can see. All right, so every year, I come out here to my AC unit, and I do maintenance. I haven't done it for this year. But one thing I do, you see all the leaves in the yard? I get a lot of leaves down inside of here. I don't know if you can see them, but they're in there. So I take this top off. I take a wet dry vac, suck all the leaves out. Then I come in here while I got the fan off, and I'll take and I'll take a water nozzle, and I'll push water through the condenser from the inside out. And the reason you do it from the inside out is because the air comes in here and blows out the top. I'm going to do a specific video on just all that, but one thing I also do is I check the capacitance on this capacitor right here to make sure it's staying in range. And uh, they kind of just, it's, it's kind of a, doing like a health check on the unit. If this is still in range, then I'm good. If it's starting to get out of range, then that's the clue to go ahead and either replace it or have one on standby. It's best to replace it because it just puts extra strain on the compressor anytime this thing goes out. I took the panel off my condensing unit out here 
and I'm looking for my common wire going to my compressor and here it is right here the common is a black wire and I've already located that I've got my clamp meter on that as you can see this is the one going to the compressor you always want to make sure you're on the common to the compressor because it ties into the run winding and the start winding for a, um, an accurate end rush you want to make sure it's on that wire so you don't want to be confused here there is a common on the capacitor also that common actually gets this red wire which is a run wire and this it ties into the same part here and that goes back to the compressor that's the run winding make sure you on the common to the compressor now I've had this unit off for a little while and that's important too to make sure your pressure is equalized because if I just had this thing running maybe five minutes ago if I try to sand rush then there could still be more pressure on the high side than there is a low side which would give it a false reading it would definitely be higher amperage because it's starting under more of a load so make sure you let this sit here and equalize good. If you had a set of gauges hooked up, then you could definitely tell if your pressures are equalized. I'm not doing that. I know it's been plenty of time. So I want to turn my clamp meter on and I want to put it on the 60 to 600 amp reading here. Now it's a little hard to see out here in this bright sun. Hopefully you can see it. We're going to hit the function three times. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a row of dashes here. Now I'm going to plug the power up, and this will capture the inrush. Just lay that in here. I'm going to stab my disconnect back in. And there we go. Hopefully you can see that. That is 93.5. 93.5. All right, now let me explain to you real quick why I don't like what I'm reading here. So hopefully you can hear me over this air conditioner. Manufacturers of these units always put a label. Let me see if I can get over here and give you a better shot. All right, now as you can see, it's got some numbers there. Your RLA, that is your run amps. Your LRA, that is your lock road ramps. Or you could say your starting amps. And it's showing, that looks to be, what is that, 79? 79 or 78, I'm half blind. But that's lower than what I actually read on that inrush, which tells me that this, this unit is a very good candidate for like a hard start kit, or better yet, a soft start kit. A hard start kit can be a little hard on a unit, and we normally reserve that for units that are pretty much shot and you might get another year or two out of them so I'm definitely considering a soft start kit for this unit and that would get rid of the inrush altogether I just checked this capacitor to make sure that it's not getting so far out of range that it was contributing to a higher inrush and uh, it isn't I have an app on my phone that will allow me to actually take some measurements on this capacitor while the unit is up and running and it will determine if uh, it's good or bad. Now, with that said, let me show you the chart here. So here's the information that it gave me. Under load capacitor test result is this amount of variation is acceptable. It's, uh, it's giving me the input of 45 microfarads that I entered. That's what this capacitor is. And by the time it calculated everything, it's showing it actually at 43.13 microfarads, which is within minus 1.87 variation. It's a good capacitor. So I'll keep checking that year after year, but I am seriously considering getting a soft start kit for this unit. Well, hopefully from that, you can see the importance of knowing what the inrush current is. You might have other applications you could use that on that would be beneficial. And uh, any motor is going to have inrush, any motor, unless it's got certain devices to help it get started, like a soft start kit. And that's why I'm definitely considering one. But now I know I do have a problem. I really wasn't expecting that. My unit's only two and a half, going on three years old. 
and I don't like what I'm seeing. So I'm more likely going to invest in a soft start kit. They can vary somewhere between 200 or to 300 plus, you know, but compared to what a unit costs, that's not too bad of an investment. And I will be doing my uh, regular annual maintenance on this, and I'll more than likely do a video on that. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see exactly how I do that. And as far as this clamp meter goes, I love it. Now, I will say one thing. When, I, when you click on the link that's in the description, you're going to see two choices there. 208D, that's what I have. Then right beside it, for $10 more, they got a 208F. And what the F is, it's a brighter screen. If you notice, there was a little dim in this bright sunlight out here. I could see it. Hopefully the camera picked it up. But if you want a bright screen that's made for outdoors, get the F version. Like I said, it's around $10 more. The one I have would be most suited for like uh, where you're in a shop condition like automotive or whatever. But I will be using it outdoors for what I just did. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this video, got something from it. Check out the links below. There is going to be a code in there. You can get, I think it is 10% off plus some, just look in the description. I'll have it all right there, but there's definitely some savings included. Appreciate y'all watching. I'm Russ Jones with Skill Savvy DIY.